and the most cited paper is the recovery of copper printed circuit boards by the group of Professor Jane Zopas Ferreira in the Federal University of Rio Grande do Sul. Five of the 30 papers are published in Brazilian journals, four of them in the Journal of the Brazilian Chemical Society. Well, here I will be presenting you a contribution which I think it's very interesting from our group, which is a research that was led by Professor Neryu Suboki. Uh, when we recover metals, as I presented before, we, I talked only of reducing the metal on the cathode. Okay? What we are doing, what we published, is a process for a specific metal where we remove the metal both by the reduction process and also by the oxidation process. So, w the specific metal where we can do this is lead. And this is the, an expansion of our reactor in the center, both in the center, which is the cathode, and one here is the anode. So, the cathode is where the reduction occurs, the anode is where the, the oxidation occurs. Both of them, all of them, are made of stainless steel wool that we buy in the supermarket. Stainless steel wool used for cleaning in kitchens. Okay? And so we also have what we call turbulence promoters between uh, the different uh, uh, electrodes. Before, when, when you do the process, when you're interested in only having the reduction process, you have to separate the region of the cell where you have the, the oxidation process from the region of the cell where you have the reduction process. So you have a membrane, like nafion, separating. So you have what we call the catalyte and the analyte. There is one compartment where we'll be reducing and one compartment we, where we don't do any recovery of the metal. When we propose this, one big advantage is that there there is no necessity of separation because we will be removing the metal both by oxidation and reduction. And that's one advantage because once you put a barrier in the middle between the two, the two, the two electrodes, you have a potential drop, which means your, your, your cost is going to go up because the cost is also always the difference, is always the product, I mean, between the current and the, the potential difference between the two electrodes. <coughs> so, as you can see here, if we start with a solution that is, has a, a, a concentration of lead of 50 milligrams per liter, after 30 minutes, after 30 minutes, you can see that we are already at a very low concentration. And after 90 minutes, we reach 99.6% removal. So almost everything is removed. But what is very interesting is that of this removal, more than 95% is now being removed as oxide instead of being removed as lead, as metal lead, as lead, metallic lead. And using this system, we, we, we have been investigating the, rec the re recovery of lead from a uh, solution uh, for many years. So we first published a paper back in 2006, then another one with some improvements in 2008. And here we can compare the three works. So this previous works, we had the cathode and the anode separated by a membrane. Okay? As you can see, the potential of the cell is much higher. So the cell potential, there is a large gain in cell potential, goes down. These two are 
inverted so this is the conversion of lead as you as you saw after 30 minutes was 98 percent so this numbers should be there and those numbers should be here and we have a 35 percent energy efficiency so before we had 17 percent energy efficiency we increased it doing some changes doing the galvanostatic work instead of the potential static to 22 and with this new process it went up to 35 percent the energy efficiency and as you can see after 30 minutes we can recover 98 percent while before we recovered only 81 percent so this this is what I, I I consider a very interesting contribution uh, from our laboratory okay let's move on now to electro electro oxidation now so we, now we are talking of having organics in the wastewater so we can oxidize the organic directly on the electrode surface but we can also use other routes we can use the positive electrode the anode to generate hydroxyl radicals and from or we can generate hydrogen peroxide or we can generate ozone and as you know these are all strong oxidants the strongest one is hydroxyl radical and this this species can be used to oxidize the organics in the wastewater we can also use what is called indirect oxidation if you have a species in solution that you can oxidize into something that is an oxidant and if you have chloride you can generate uh, what is called active chlorine and depending on the pH of the solution you will have if the pH is lower than 3 you will have this species if the pH is, is above 3 and below uh, 7.5 you have uh, the acid and if you the pH is above 7.5 you will have hypochlorite so all this can actually happen at the same time in the cell if wished there are problems if you use this because once you introduce active chlorine species you may generate organic organochloride species which may not be uh, good okay so the best route since we this route can 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 lead to organochloride this is the best route the best route is to have the generation in the anode of this species the problem is that for that you need to have specific electrode materials not every electrode material will uh, lead to this species what happens it all depends on when most of the time we, we are working in water so and in water we have a limit if we apply a potential in the electrode if we if the electrode becomes too positive you start having the oxidation of water so you you start producing oxygen bubbles if the electrode becomes too negative you start reducing water and you start generation hydrogen so there is what we call a potential window where you can do electrochemistry without reducing or oxidizing the solvent okay and so it's very important for in, in, in the case where we want to generate this species here it's very important whether the electrode has it's easy or difficult to generate oxygen on the electrode and as you can see there <coughs> for these electrodes here it's not very difficult to generate water and as you go down in the column you can see the, o the oxidation potential goes up so as you move from 
These are called dimensionally stable anodes. They are used in the, chloro, the, the chlorine in generation industry. As you move from, from the dimension from the oxide electrodes down to these other oxide electrodes, it becomes more difficult to generate oxygen. And the best material available currently is uh, boron dope diamond. If you dope diamond, it becomes conductive and it's an excellent electrode material because of this, because it's very difficult to generate oxygen on the diamond. And it's very interesting that as, as you move down in the column, the interaction of hydroxyl radicals with the electrode surface becomes weaker. So there is chem's option of the radical on the top here, there is fizz option down here. As it is weakly adsorbed, it is more available to oxidize species in solution. Okay? So in our laboratory what we have been doing is is trying to compare this electrodes and also with that electrode in different processes. There is one electrode material that in principle so here is is what I call I showed I talked to you before this is the the window of opportunity to do electrochemistry to oxidize something else or reduce something else besides water as you can see if you, from platinum to diamond the window is much larger carbon is also much larger glassy carbon for instance and there is this Maginelli phase of titanium oxide which has even a larger window towards the positive side so in principle this would be even better than boron dopa diamond the problem is is the availability of the material it's very difficult to get it very difficult to fabricate it so as far as I know there is only one there was one company in England that was using Ebonex but recently I was not able to find it any longer so I don't know be if because of the crisis the company closed or not but this company had a, a very interesting uh, uh, proposal in England you have to pay a fee the larger the organic load in the wastewater the more tax you have to pay 